Good evening, guys. Uh, what's going on there? Earthmaster here on the live stream. I uh, hope everyone's having a great Monday evening. It is uh, the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Monday evening here in California. Uh, November 15th, 2021 is the date. It's about 8 p.m., straight up 8 p.m. California time. And the latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe, a 4.3 earthquake striking around the Indonesia area. Seeing a little bit of swarm activity out there in that region of the world. Also some further movement down in South America as well. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on around the globe. On the flat scale Earth model here from the USGS. We'll go ahead and see what's going on here. There's that 4.3 uh, in the Indonesia region. Pretty deep earthquake movement over the last 24 hours. Including a deeper 4.4 earthquake at 280 kilometers. But this earthquake here well over to the west of the current... 4.3 which struck at 148 kilometers uh, moving up north here through the uh, pacific ring of fire looks still very quiet through the japan area yes we did see a 4.9 uh way earlier uh, but uh actually that was kind of late last night i believe early this morning so overall things have been relatively quiet uh, through that region of the plate over the last 24 hours they're looking through the Aleutian Islands and the Alaska region 2.5 map and 2.5 and above uh, show some movement around the uh, Aleutian area and into the subduction zone here of the Pacific plate let's go ahead and check out uh, the all magnitudes get a little bit better scope of what's going on here kind of watching a swarm of activity here where we've seen this 4.4 strike earlier uh, just around the uh, the Aleutian Trench region, 10 kilometers for that earthquake. But since then, we've seen a little bit of migration of quakes towards the north, uh, kind of migrating away from that 4.4. Some activity through the Anchorage area and up towards Fairbanks with only a couple of small microquakes around the Fairbanks, Alaska region. Stretching down into the west coast area. See some movement around Northern California and Northern Nevada. Looks like Pyramid Lake area seen a little swarm. Uh, what is that? Sutcliffe, Nevada. Some deep earthquake activity occurring near Pyramid Lake. Looking at uh, a little swarm right, right there kicking off. Nothing significant. Looks like so far a 2.3 is the uh, largest quake in that little cluster of movement. Not for sure the uh, historical data out here. I know, uh, of course, Nevada is full of fault systems. Looking at this uh, scale, does not really show too much in the way of earthquake activity um, historically of course this is only going to be 4.5 to 5.0 magnitude but i'm sure other earthquake activity has occurred um, in this region throughout time but uh, either way seen a little swarming out there around pyramid lake nevada it was just uh let's see it's been a while since i've been up north into this region north of reno but uh it's kind of Kind of interesting. We'll go ahead and keep an eye on that. Some of these depths of the earthquakes pretty far down there. Looking at 12 kilometers below uh, the, uh, looks like the west side of Pyramid Lake. Uh, moving down south through the Antelope Valley, Long Valley Super Volcano and Ridgecrest area. All looks uh, kind of typical for an earthquake day there in California. Some movement up around the Lone Pine Fault System as well with a 2.1 near Lone Pine. Also some activity kicking up in the Ridgecrest region. And uh, Garlock Fault looks pretty quiet except for a little uh, human-caused quarry blast near uh, Tehachapi, California on the Garlock Fault. Uh, things kind of ramping up in the Southern California region, San Jacinto Fault area. And also some movement along both sides of the San Andreas Fault, the southern end, the locked section, if you will. Uh, looks like quite a bit of microquake activity in and around that uh, fault boundary, that plate boundary. But most of it, as you can see on the map, is all microquakes, but still nonetheless some activity occurring uh, within that region. We did see a 3.3 earthquake striking up near Parkfield, California, 9.9 .9 kilometers for that earthquake, right on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. We have been seeing a little swarm of movement on this area over the past few days. That looks like it is continuing uh, to this date movement south of the border as well looks like a couple of small earthquakes microquakes uh, north and south of the border salton sea area looks pretty quiet 
uh, kind of watching some movement up through the Intermountain West region, but even here looks relatively quiet and below normal, uh, below background levels as far as earthquake activity goes in this region of the states. Uh, Pecos, Texas, pretty quiet out there. Not a whole lot of movement out in the uh, earthquake country of Texas lately. Uh, Quinton, Oklahoma, though, seeing a little bit of return of earthquake activity in that region of the state with a 2.1 and also 2.8 that struck earlier as well. Uh, some uh, little bit of movement out there in eastern Oklahoma. Some beautiful countryside out there for sure. Uh, looking at the South America region, we are looking at a swarm of deep earthquake activity in the Chile region. And uh, you can see some of these depths there stre stretching down to 233 kilometers for the uh, for that earthquake activity into the uh, Peru-Chile trench region. Also off the coast, well off the coast of South America in the eastern Pacific rise, we're watching a, uh, a little swarm of activity as well, 5.6 and a 4.6 right here in this little fracture area uh, south of Easter Island out in the east Pacific rise. Uh, looking at the big island out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Looking pretty active, at least on this map here. Seeing a pretty significant uptick in swarm activity in the southeastern flank. Of course, this area is very prone to earthquake activity at these depths here. Look at this first one, 33.3 kilometers. It's, that number has some uh, some pretty extreme significance um, in, uh, in my life anyway. 333. Uh, but uh, 1.7 microquake there at that depth. Looking at the southeastern region, showing, uh, well, we're looking at about 50. Uh, as we zoom in here, we're looking at about 44 earthquakes or so scattered out and about the southeast area of the Big Island with some movement up north around Mauna Loa and also Mauna Kea area. Looking uh, just to the north of here, some deeper earthquake activity north of uh, Mauna Kea. And uh, looking down, uh, let's see here, a pretty Pretty, uh, I can say it's still pretty quiet out here around the northwestern Pacific Ring of Fire. Of course, that uh, could very well change out here in the southwest Indian Ridge. Of course, we did see that uh, earthquake activity late last night. They did see a couple small aftershocks since then. It looks like uh, some movement. Uh, looks like 5.3 and a 4.7. Uh, the most recent quakes. But uh, overall, things kind of just uh, doing its thing on this planet. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone thumbnails while we're at it. And things look pretty quiet. It looks like maybe, eh, this looks like interference on these two stations of Yellowstone. I don't believe these are earthquake related. Just uh, been watching these over the past few days and have been showing kind of some abnormal type of readings on the... Uh, on the seismographs, but they look to be man-made or some type of uh, technical errors with the uh, seismographs in the uh, vicinity of the uh, northeastern Yellowstone area, Pelican Cove, and the uh, Mirror Lake Plateau area. Looking at uh, tremor map in the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, no surprise there. Looking at only seven epicenters of tremor along the very extreme edge of the southern part of the Cascadia subduction zone. So. Pretty quiet in that region of the uh, um, of trimmer department. Space weather, we haven't really seen too much in the way of movement here. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, solar ham site. And uh, looks like only a 10% chance of a sea flare over the, the next uh, couple days or so. We did see a little uptick in the um, KP index here. Looks like they are forecasting that uh, for a for uh, next couple days, next couple nights, I've seen the potential aurora forecast there in the uh, higher latitudes. The uh, looks like it's coming in kind of right now. You can see the aurora oval kicking up a little in the northern latitudes there, much higher latitudes. Not for sure if they're going to get down any further south than that. But uh, for those lucky folks up there, things are maybe a maybe an interesting, cool photogenic night. Um, sunspot activity pretty diminished, not a whole lot going on. 2896 kind of rotating into view, while 2894 will exit uh, the Earth side, and we'll see what's around that within the next couple days. Have a good night, folks.
still kind of recovering from uh, off the grid uh, living. Of course, that is considered camping, right? <laughs> I guess that's considered camping. I, I kind of like the idea of off grid living for a few days uh, myself. But uh, anyway, have a good night, guys. We will chat at you a little bit later. Stay safe. Peace out.